All right. Uh, so everybody, don't freak out. All right. This is completely normal, and, and, and I'll explain why I'm wearing this in just a second. See, I'm from a different timeline. Everything is all screwed up, and in the, my timeline, we have to still wear masks, except we have to literally wear masks. And so I wasn't going to go buy one, and since I had my uh, Mr. Robot S Society mask rolling around, I decided to put this on. But I just wanted to show you kind of an example of what's going on in this new timeline. Now, let me explain, okay, because the timelines are all fucked up, all right? Uh, you know, with Avengers and Loki causing all kinds of chaos to the timeline, things are now starting to bleed into our reality. The video you're about to see isn't even from now. It's from the past. It was recorded back in February of 2021. And so what you're going to see is already weird enough. The set looks different, even though it kind of still looks kind of the same. Things are slightly different. Things are slightly changed. I'm still wearing a backwards baseball cap, but you can hear, see that my hair is still long back then. But uh, the timeline's in jeopardy. And if you don't believe me, look. In my timeline now, Seinfeld is Star Wars. They became Star Wars. Seinfeld was Star Wars here. I don't even know what's going on. I'm just trying to wear shirts to, you know, till I fit in because I remember everything somehow. Things are all screwed up. So I don't want you to be too jarred, you know, watching Rob's video from the present past in the present. He doesn't even have the dates right for what's going on with like the videos that he's doing with these reviews. They haven't even gotten to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. season four yet. And he's talking about that happening, I think, in April. April was like a long time ago. It's now your present is June, almost July, and they haven't even, they're covering Loki over on these reviews. They haven't even gotten to Agents of Shield already. So the time is just all kinds of bonkers right now. So, uh, you know, just to give you like a heads up for the videos that you're going to see over the next few weeks and probably months are so far behind <laughs> that Hopefully by the time you get to see some of this stuff that the timeline will end up back to where it needs to be and you guys will be more caught up in the present and hopefully we figure things out so that Star Wars and Seinfeld can start being separate things. That's just the tip of the iceberg. I don't even want to tell you all the things that are going nuts over here on this timeline. I mean, but before I go, while I have you, before we get, I pass it back and I, you know, give the video back to past Rob. Uh, I want to talk about something really quickly. And that's the one interesting thing that's going on over here in this timeline that is a benefit to what's going on in Rob's current timeline over uh, that you're going to see uh, in the video. And that's in my timeline, right? See, well, I should say preface what's going on in, in Rob's past timeline is that Kevin Feige and the rest of them and a bunch of other people are saying that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. isn't canon, isn't part of the MCU. They refuse to acknowledge the show practically at all. I don't know if that has to do because uh, the name Whedon is in the, pro the production. You know, when you look at the credits, maybe they want to distance themselves from the name Whedon. But to me, that disrespects everybody that worked on the show, if you limit it like that. And I'm not saying that that's what it is. I'm just saying it's just fishy. But they, you know, we, in Rob's past timeline that you're going to watch, him and some of his other friends like D have been pushing for Feige to let Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. be in the timeline, at least acknowledge the show and things like that. But in this new timeline, one of the only benefits is that it's not Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that's been left out. It's the MCU. Now... Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in this timeline is canon, and MCU timeline is actually out of canon. They're actually way off doing their own thing. It's split off, and it's crazy nuts going on over there. So basically, it's nice that the television show in this timeline actually is part of the MCU canon, and the MCU canon has gone off the rails. And so... 
that's all I want to tell you. That's at least one benefit to being in this timeline. But hopefully it gets fixed. And hopefully in the present timeline that you guys are on, maybe somewhere down the line, somebody will give Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. the credit that it finally deserves. Because right now, all they're doing is catering to a bunch of people who only go see the movies. And do not give Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. the credit that it deserves. Because all the things that they've been doing on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. throughout the seven years that they were on, they've been saving the world in ways that the MCU movies sometimes couldn't even touch. And in a lot of ways, the, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. series was so much w better written than a lot of the MCU films. And I'm saying it. What really happened in the Iron Man 3 movies? Or all the Iron Man movies, I should say. It was just character studies of Tony Stark. What world-ending events ever happened in Iron Man movies? He had Whiplash and some robots that uh, Sam Rockwell made. In the first one, you had Jeff Bridges trying to make uh, his own Iron Man suit. And in three, you had the extremist stuff. Like, oh sure, I think that's something that somebody would have to keep an eye on, but it wasn't world-destroying. Season five of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. had our team going up against Graviton. A guy who could literally break the earth. So Feige and the rest of you guys in Rob's current timeline, get with the fucking program and admit that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is canon. Anyway, enjoy the video and have a great day. This episode of Smirking Gun Reviews is brought to you by Agent Leopold Fitz's Primal Scream Tension Breakers. That's right, if things are getting a little too stressful at work, home, or just in general, and you need to figure find some way to let out the scream without looking like you're insane, just put on this clip and no one will think anything about you. You just say, hey, I'm watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So remember, Agent Leopold Fitz's Tension Breakers. Uh, 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 uh. Stop it. Ba 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 Right, hey everybody, how you doing today? Welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here at Smirking Gun Reviews, back with more Old Shield new reviews where we look back at old episodes of Agents of Shield. Around we've done season one, season two, season three. We are almost at the end of season three, and we'll be starting season four pretty much right away. Uh, these are being recorded in advance, so. <laughs> I don't know when these are going to come out, so I'm always going to say, if you like this uh, channel, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. But also, don't forget to go over to D's Reviews, where myself and Darren Jakes and Don Willie and Corey Shoemaker, all of us together talk about a season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We've done season one and two, and season one of Agent Carter. Uh, by the time you see this, probably season three of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We're also doing Agent Carter season two in March. And we'll be covering season four of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in April. And so on and so forth for the rest of the seasons. But today, we're talking about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. season three, episode 21. The first of the two-part finale of this season. And they waste no time coming out the gate swinging right into the mission. In fact, it was a little jarring because I've seen all these episodes, a lot of these episodes, pretty close together, and even I went, wow, that was fast. Um, also, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is famous for doing their finales, you know, not making you wait another week to see their finales, but unfortunately, that's not how we do things here. We're talking about each part individually. Um, and so, this is going to end 
<laughs> a really critical part that really makes you go, oh my god! Because at the end of last episode, we got Daisy back. And, of course, there's going to be dealing with the withdrawal and the guilt, which is a lot of this. In fact, the beginning of this is a great beginning of Coulson and Daisy on a planet that's been devastated. It looks a lot like the planet, probably is supposed to represent the planet uh, that Hive came from. Because if she knew, if Hive knew it, I think she kind of knows it too. And it's about her saying she can't believe that everybody's dead. We've got to try to fix this. And that Coulson reminding her, this is Earth, not some other place. Even though it can't be Earth because from outside it's clearly in another galaxy far, far away. <laughs> but it's a nightmare. And that's kind of like where she's at, that guilt the guilt that Daisy has is huge in this episode. The the feelings of connection that she had and, and, and uh, how horrible she feels at what she did. But at the same time, it's like, it's hard for her probably to adjust to not just what she did, but how much she probably liked it. You know, there's this thing that this, this thing that I, whatever I gave her, you know, she really felt all these things. And so, that's a big part of this episode. But also, the beginning of this episode that you just saw behind me start to play, starting to play out is an incredible action-packed spy mission uh, that is so well done. Everybody's got their parts to play. It is a one of the best sequences I think Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has ever done as far as like a coordinated attack. Feeling very much like there's no chance, there's no hope, Hive's got this nuclear weapon on this island out in the middle of nowhere. And how are they going to get the nuclear codes? But everybody's got a part in this plan. Everybody's got something going on. And it's so great to see this all play out. Because they talk about how if anything gets close to this island, even cloaked, we'll be able to see it. But what I didn't know, what I had forgotten, is that... <laughs> <laughs> they didn't come from the air. They come from the sea. And that was brilliant. They The ship comes right out of the water. They can't even see it happening. They land and everybody's got their roles to play. Okay. <laughs> I had to take a quick little edit there because my heater actually turned on and I didn't want it to make so much noise you couldn't hear me. So anyway, back into this mission, right? So everybody's got their part to play. The ship is on the island now. Talbot and Fitz. Okay, this part right here, part right here, <laughs> is one of the funniest things in the entirety of the of the show. But Talbot and Fitz, they trick a guy to getting the information that they need for the nuclear codes. They need a kill code. The guy won't give it to him, but he gives him all the information to Talbot to where they need it who then send the ball over, pass the baton over to Coulson, so that Coulson could go in there, get the codes, and th then send the code to Lincoln and May, who are on the island at the Uplink Center, to put in the authorization override for the nuclear missile. You know, And then meanwhile, you got Mac and Elena slash Yo-Yo trying to build this device built, made out of the memory machine that they were they had and all of this has to go pull off in very, very short order because the nuke is about to just take off. Which leads us to that green screen scene that is one of the funniest things I've ever seen on television. <laughs> Especially on a drama. And it was almost like the, the it, what worked was that we're watching this kind of pulling our hair out. It's white knuckle. And then Fitz lets out that scream when he's trying to prepare to be this, you know, f the guy that has the, the, the author that would get the authorization for a kill code from the Defense Department. And when he screams, ah! it was like a tension breaker almost for all of us who are at that point probably screaming in our heads, right? But it goes up without a hitch. It's so funny that they get the code to Coulson, right? He pulls up, just grabs him with the sheet of 
code that is like the longest <laughs> code you've ever seen and they only have 20 seconds to do it in and I looked at that code and I did the math in my head and I said there's no fucking way they're getting that off but television magic makes things happen folks and so you know of course at the last second the authorization goes through and the nuke is over and of course you know Hive starts to lose his shit threatening Radcliffe you know talking more about absolution the big question of the day is what is absolution why does he keep talking about it when that gets revealed I gotta admit I was a little underwhelmed <laughs> but it works but you know Hive thinks he's the savior right but he's got this army his new army of what I call ass faces, right? For like the guy from Preacher that Radcliffe makes for him. These things, first off, I just, the design is terrible, but I, I love it at the same time. It's, it's, they do. They look like they have assholes for faces. And when Radcliffe is supposed to work with two of them, him trying to convince them to, or not convince them, but try to get through to their primitive minds to help him try to to uh, disconnect and and authorize the uh, a, a launch <laughs> of a nuclear missile <laughs> with these two guys is hilarious and weird but then when May comes in and uh, has this she has this great action sequence um, you know it's just May versus the ass faces Again, the stunt work that they do here is, you know, I know Ming Na does so much, but the, the stunt workers always do such a great job. And in this scene, it's just as good. Just seeing this tiny little person jumping on top of these guys, it's just fantastic to watch. Um, now, there's another part to this, and it always, you know, the parts that people are going to have a problem with, it, it always ends up being about Lincoln. You know, Lincoln's there. He did his job. Of course, he's the one who gets seen on camera, so they know where they are. That's not his fault. Again, I don't bear any ill will to the actor. I think it's Luke Mitchell who plays Lincoln. It's the writers who've made him this way. You know, girls like him probably. The guy, you know, rest of the audience doesn't really like him. But they have this scene where Ward slash Hive is goading Lincoln that classic, I'm going to tell him all the things that he needs to hear to face off against me so I can take his power. And all I kept waiting through that entire scene was, when is Lincoln going to do something stupid? And the thing is, is he doesn't. He doesn't. You know, it's, it's so erratic the way that they choose to make this guy. Where he's smart one second and so stupid the next. But he doesn't, and he leads Hive to the trap they've made, where Turtle Man, as Yo-Yo likes to call Mac about how he works, uh, they have the memory machine that Daisy was saying should be used on her if they want all the information. But they use it to scramble Hive, and this was a great scene as well, because Brett Dalton, okay, this is Brett Dalton's swan song these last two episodes. After this, it's pretty much, you know, he's... A, in a bit, a, a little bit of season four, but other than that, it's pretty much it for him. And this was a really interesting way to do it because he has got all these memories of everybody that he's killed, Hive has. And Brett Dalton has to relive, you know, Ward's kind of like greatest hits slash worst moments. And he gets to, you know, have to re-deliver all those lines to all those horrible things that he said and did over the course of the last couple of years. And it's, again, a testament to Brett Dalton to how good he is and how much we loved Ward and then we hated Ward. And, 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 and now he's, you know, just this, used as a host for this thing. It's also really tragic. And I, I know I'm not the only one who, who is a fan of Ward as far as a character goes. Like, he's despicable. He's been made this way, though. And it's tragic because he is a victim, but he's also a guy who never 
you know, would own up to any of this stuff. But Brett Dalton gets to give, like, all these things up again and, and show, like, his brain is scrambled now. Hive doesn't know what he's talking about right now. But he finally kind of comes through and they talk about disconnecting the nuclear bomb, which is where his goons go to, to get uh, the nuclear weapon to take it. They take it from May <laughs> at the last second, so they have it. What they fail to realize and what Daisy has to bring up later is that she told him everything. And by everything, it literally means everything. So they trap Hive. He comes out, and again, we get this great hero moment that is pretty funny at the end of it. They trap Hive in basically an amber coffin, you know, a big amber case. And then they take him with. Now, Radcliffe's woo was great, but all I could think was, okay, you got him. Now shoot that some bitch into the sun. Okay? I don't, you know, if anything else goes wrong, right? The missile is bad enough. But if he gets loose, it's just, and of course, we need him to get loose. The story needs him to get loose again. So they don't just do the thing that they need to do, which is shoot him into the fucking sun. <laughs> or whatever. That's just my first idea. My, my ideas usually end up with, you know, shooting somebody into the sun. Not every idea. <laughs> but some of them. So how does Hive get out? Well, it's how we find out what Absolution Montana is. And it's because he knew all about the Zephyr and its high, cal uh, high altitude capabilities. He wanted to be brought there so that he could get control of it, take the missile and fire it and drop rain, you know, rain. You know, this mist that'll turn every human into one of these ass faces. And lo and behold, just as they figure out that the labels on the car uh, car crates say Absolution Montana, you know, biggity bam biddy boom. <laughs> What was I trying to say just then? Bing, bang, boom. They blow up. And I thought it was really nice of the mist to just stay in one area so that Fitz could be off to the side going, let me out. While the other poor agents are all taken <laughs> and turned into ass faces because there's no cure. They all get Terrigen mist and they all turn into ass faces except for Fitz and one other guy at the end. Um, and the only reason Fitz is saved is because of this thing called Van's third year compiler theory that is somehow gives Gemma a code to open up the hangar doors and seal them in, protecting them from Hive. But really, nobody's going to be protected once Hive gets the Zephyr. And so, you know, I also should mention that there's a scene where Lincoln talks about how he doesn't want to be with S.H.I.E.L.D. now. Like after it's all said and done and then he's crying about, I don't have anything Daisy wants or needs because that's what Hive said to him. Come on, dude. How insecure are you that you listen to the bad guy who you know? Like why would they write him like that? That's just silly. Now, it's true he wouldn't be there without Daisy. But it's just, come on. The guy's like... 6'1", and, and good-looking as hell, and he's crying. So he doesn't want S.H.I.E.L.D., and I'm just like, no doy. But um, Mac forgives Daisy. There's a great breakdown scene there. Again, Chloe Bennett's really good in this as well. There's a little trip that Fitz and Simmons are planning to the seashells uh, where a, a thought about her doing something to Fitz that will blow his mind... <laughs> turns into just snorkeling. Um, well, we get a, a little bit of, uh, I remember seeing this moment when Fitz grabs the cross and we know that the cross ends up on the Zephyr that's in orbit where somebody dies. I remember thinking, oh my God, Fitz is going to die. Um, but there's this great moment <laughs> where Daisy sees everything going down. She's like, I can't believe this is happening. And I'm like, well, maybe you can't, but the audience is going, of course, this is happening. Everything is falling apart. Hive is getting the ship. Hive has, can use the Zephyr as a missile now to 
make his army of ass faces. And Daisy then, when nobody else is looking, you realize that she could have gotten out of her cell at any time she wanted. And she uses that opportunity to take the, uh, what, what, what do they call it, the isolation chamber, you know, that, that can hold an inhuman, brings it up to Hive, stands behind him and says, on her knees, please take me back because she's hurting. Now, on the surface, that is a terrible thing to end on <laughs> because she's going right back to the guy that she says, you know, did all this to her and, and, and she deserves all the pain and suffering and all that. But we also know how much she hates him. So we know she has a plan going into this. But just what that plan is, I don't know. Because I can't remember. <laughs> so that's part one of our part two finale of season three. If you like this review, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe. Hit the bell for all notifications. Otherwise, we'll be back with the part two, episode 22, the final episode of season three. We finally got here. And it's almost here. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we will see you on the next episode. Bye. All right, I'm back one last time. Past Rob didn't have a chance to put an end like he's been doing on the rest of his videos, where he tells everybody to like and subscribe and all that, but he hasn't been in those videos putting on the sunglasses and telling you, if you hated every single thing that I said in this video, we can give you a better memory. So for those of you who hated that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. review, we're going to take back some time off of your life and give you a better memory. So all of you who did like this video, please look away. Those of you who hated it, look right here and we'll give you a better memory. This is the memory that I choose to give you. Stop it.